singular runway uh, because this is the much anticipated, most exciting event of the entire conference. It's the much anticipated fashion style guide by John Papa. Because I know that each of you know that the, we have a crisis in development today. And that crisis is that developers don't know how to dress. <laughs> if you opened up that code base and you've looked inside and you took one look and you said, that person must have gotten dressed in a closet in the dark. All right, it's just that bad. Now, John and I, we, we get along together. We pair a lot, and pairing um, requires, well, it's a very vulnerable moment when you open up your, your code to somebody. It requires uh, a, a tenderness um, because there you are and very vulnerably, and you open up that code and you say, John, does that controller make me look fat? <laughs> anyway, here he is, the Sultan of Style, the angularizer, John Papa. Well, it's good that Ward gave me a little bit of time because I was trying to debug some code that I was going through for a demo here. You know, nothing like a demo failure at the last minute. And I'm trying to understand some code. It's this controller. And the problem I'm having is I'm looking through here and there's like data services inside my controller. There's Breeze, HTTP, Firebase, oh my. It's just a big mess. So I don't know. I'm just going to go beat up the author of that. And, oh, yeah, that was me. Um, because the point here is that when we start writing code, we don't always intend it to look the way that it comes out. Sometimes it looks great, sometimes it doesn't. And code isn't about just the bits, the ones and the zeros. The computer is not the only thing that reads it. We all have to be able to communicate with each other and with ourselves, because often we're the ones that write the messy code that later on we can't even read. Uh, we've had some good examples this week of things that were kind of like, maybe I should have done something different. For example, yesterday, the filter, 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 filter. Uh, and thank you, Shai, for the explaining the provider that provides a service, which is a factory or a service that's a provider. He left out a constant or value as well. So, but I think he explained it pretty well. So there's things like this that make us think, because code isn't just about code. It all comes down to we need the code to be a channel of communication between two people. Sometimes it's you and yourself later when you're writing your own code. Sometimes it's between two people on a team. Either it's uh, co-located or in different locations around the world. Ward and I pair across the country. And it works out good because we can communicate with each other. So today, my talk is about digging into the style guide for Angular and the thoughts and decisions that I helped put into that and some others like Todd Motto and a lot of the community and the Angular team as well. And the key to a lot of this is you just never know who's going to be looking at that code. It could be you, it could be somebody crazy like Ward, uh, it could be anybody on your team. But you want to make sure that when that person's looking at that code, they're not giving it one of those moments. It's got to be those moments of aha, instantly recognizable. Because code is not intended for the computer. Believe it or not, it's intended for people to read. The computers will run it. They really don't care about how you design your code as long as it's functional. But the people want to make sure they can read your code. So it's not about pretty artful code. It really, really isn't, OK? We can say, you know, Mishka's got some awesome Angular code here, and he loves this, and Igor loves his controllers. But it's not about the code. It's about the communication, fast and effective communication. How many people here have opened up a code base because they were asked to modify someone's code, and their first instinct was, I don't even know where to begin? I mean, we've all had that moment, right? Never happened to me. My code's perfect. But that happens when it's all about communication. So let me give you an example from the style guide uh, that kind of drives this home, a really simple one. One of the concepts, and the first concept in the guide, is intentionally defining one component per file. You don't want to have a mess like you just saw that I wrote, actual code. Uh, that's a big pile of spaghetti. It's hard to get through. Looks good, doesn't it? I'm Italian. I like ravioli code. So ravioli code <laughs> is all about one thing per file. Every file's got some cheese, maybe some broccoli, maybe some spinach, maybe some meat. Everything's encapsulated inside of that ravioli. The ravioli knows how to operate. It can talk to other raviolis. And somebody's going to say, yeah, but John, we don't want to send a 1,000 files to the browser, yada, 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 yada. We're not going there. You're going to bundle, mangle, and minify it anyway, right? Or you can call it bunglify, which I often do by accident. So why? Why one thing per file? 
It's easier to read, it's easier to identify, that's a big key, and it's easier to code. You can locate your code and find things very, very quickly because not everybody's gonna like to read 2,000 lines of code in a file. <laughs> Great movie. So I get asked a lot, you know, how did this guide evolve? And you got a little glimpse of that already, but the big thing with the evolution of this guide was people say, hey, how did Todd Motto and you kind of come up with this idea for an Angular style guide? You know, and some people have this theory that we sat out late night and, you know, were toasting s'mores over a campfire, looking longingly at each other and thought about this. There are some other theories as well, which are a little less founded and some a little more founded. Um, but the idea was Todd and I got together last summer. We started talking about some common interests that we had in really solving a problem of how do we communicate better with other Angular developers and reduce the 10 ways to do everything. And I think 10's being a little generous there. Sometimes in Angular we could do it 100 ways, right? But it all comes down to three main principles. Readability. Can we read our code quickly? Is it a communication tool? Can I give my code to somebody else? And this is a great test. Give your code to somebody sitting next to you today and see if they can read it without you talking to them. Can they understand what you're trying to accomplish? And inevitably, preparing for Angular 2. How do we closely align with what we do in Angular 1 today and the talk that we just saw so we can get ready for Angular 2? Because it's great to have many choices in life, but it's nice to have a path that works as well so you can have a starting place to get going. And this is great for teams to kind of get going with, and we've had a lot of feedback, Todd and I, from the community on how to articulate and kind of shape the guides. So going back to the guide itself, another example is uh, stop hurting yourself rule. There's a lot of things we do in coding every day that it's just kind of like, wait a minute, I touch the fire, it's hot. I touch the fire, it's hot. I touch the fire, it's hot. <laughs> Seriously. So why do we do these things? We all know we're not supposed to be putting all of our service logic inside of a controller, but yet sometimes it happens. So make sure we take our controller logic that's going to be shared and reusable and move it off to a service or a factory or provider or a constant or value or whatever it is in Angular 2, right? Why? Reuse. It removes implementation details from that controller and it keeps that controller slim and trim much easier to test. And then we don't have to worry so much about the communication between controllers because we've got the services that can help us do that. And of course, it makes it much easier to reuse across the entire application. So now we have a controller that simply just says, hey, I don't care how I got my customers. I just know this other thing's gonna go get it for me. Pretty simple to do. Another style that's in the guide is about the controller as style, which when it first came out, I think people were ready to throw rocks at me and stone me when I was saying, please use this style, it's pretty awesome. Uh, and really, the reason for that is, not the rock throwing, but the reason it's awesome is that we look at the style for controller as, and it's really this. This is just plain old JavaScript. It's just a constructor function. This is code we've been writing for years and years and years. We're creating a new Avenger thing at this point and a new instance of it, and it's very simple to understand. So let's look at this in the controller as style. We've got an Angular controller, and we're just using this to create properties off of it. It's much more in line with basic JavaScript. We're not inventing something new anymore. There's no magical dollar scope creature which is gonna fly out of the sky and save us. So all this kind of leads into the reasons why we wanna lead people in a certain direction so we can get ready for Angular 2 on it. But I ask you, always ask why. The core concepts in the style guide hinge upon the why. There were actually some points that I took out of the initial drafts of the style guide because I couldn't think of a why other than because I like it. That's not a good enough reason. It's got to be something more substantiated. You can't blindly trust anybody because sometimes when you blindly trust, the unexpected happens and you might fall right on your face. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. So a guide has got to have all three of these things. All three, or it's not valid and it's not as valuable as it could be. So you must explain first, what is it you're asking the person to do? Very clearly, what is it you want them to do? Use controller as, one thing per file. And then why? Why is that important? What am I gonna get? What's that benefit that I get if I use this? And then finally, how? Don't stop there. I love talking to people when they talk like their security teams at their companies. And the security team tells them, hey, you've got a security vulnerability. You can't do that. And they're like, great, how do I solve that? Oh, that's not us. You have to figure it out. 
You, you have to show them why and how to solve it. So an example in the guide, right here I've got a, one of the snippets from the screen. First I say what I'm asking people to do. Say, in this case, have a function declaration to hide implementation details, and I explain what it is, but very clearly underneath there's the why. The why is supposed to support that. And it's not important that people agree with all the whys so much as you understand the thought process. And some of these are written by some of the community coming in through several um, pull requests that I've had, and others from Igor when he helped me kind of shape some of this over the last couple of months. But you've got to have that what and that why. So going back to the guide, another big concept I'm into is readability. I like to have clear names for my functions. I'm a low comment guy and accessible members up top. So let me explain what that means. And this is important because here's a real set of code. I think Ward Bell wrote this. And it's very hard to understand what it says. Somebody was being cute. This actually has some code base I found. We're saying rules.validate. You know, they think they're being funny, but how do you search for this code later on? You look for that, you're not going to find what you're looking for. You can't do control F, command F to find it and replace and refactor. And it's not as clear. So having clearly defined names is a big key. And how do we work this over to Angular? Another piece of that is making sure that everything you've got, you don't have to scan your entire code file for. So put the stuff that's important up top. Open the file, see it's a controller, see it's a service, and you can see the exposed interface. Don't make me scan 100 lines of code to figure out what it's doing. Everything up top makes it much easier. Why? Because it answers, what is this thing? When I open my code up, I should be instantly knowing what is inside of my code. This doesn't apply to just JavaScript or Angular. It applies to any language you work in. Look at your code. As soon as I open that file, I should know exactly what it's doing. What is that interface? And it avoids that eternal scrolling syndrome, trying to figure out where things are. And it's instantly identifiable to know how you can access it from another component. So what does this all come down to? It comes down to that we read code about 10 times more often than we write it. You think about that. How much time in your day do you write code versus reading and processing and refactoring? Number of lines of code is not a metric we should be measured by. It's the quality of that code. It's the communication of that code. Reading should be easier. So leading into now, the next topic is if you ever read code, you need to understand the context of the author. So this is important in movies too, right? So in a movie, let's say you're watching this famous movie, and you're trying to figure out what is going on here. Is Harry hugging Cedric? Is he talking to him about dinner plans? Is he just really hate Twilight? I don't know. <laughs> I know I do. But without context, you don't know what's going on. So how do we apply this to Angular? Well, we get into things like modularity and structure. One of the first things people ask is, how do I create that folder structure in my project? I mean, we've got 452 generators for Angular, right? So how do you create that folder structure, what's the right way? Well, let's think about the things we've learned about communication and readability. So we can go by type, where we have everything in the controllers and services and views, or we can do it by feature, which is, to me is more contextual. I work on a dashboard, or the people, or the customers, or the order entry. You work on features at a time. I don't work on all the controllers in my app at once, or all the views in my app at once. So by designing it like that, you can start to think about how do you design your app? And I like to call this the lift principle. And in order, the first thing I like to make sure is I can locate my code easy. Folder structure is a big piece of that and naming of the files. And then the second piece is identifying it. Once I've found that file, I should be able to open it up and instantly recognize what that file is doing. What is that controller actually contributing to my project? And then flat. Have you ever gone to an online shopping site and you have to hover over a menu and a drop down menu comes down and another one and another one and another one? By the time you get to the thing you want, you've moved the mouse too far and it goes away, and you've got to start over. It's frustrating. Well, when you've got 15 layers of files and folder structures inside your project, it's hard for people to find what they're looking for. So keep it flat as long as you can, and then try to stay dry. So let's try to apply this a little bit to how we could do this in Angular. Let's say we start out with a project, and we've got some things like services and controllers. And once we design this, it looks pretty fine to be flat like this. But let's say we add a few more features like directives and logging and sessions for maybe a code camp event. Once we do that, it gets a little bit more difficult to locate. So we might create some folder structure in here for all the services that are reusable. That's logical. We add some more code, though, because we're on a mission today. We write a bunch more code, and 
Now we've got our different features for sessions and people and attendees and layout, and it's getting a little uncomfortable again. So what do we do? We create new folder structures, and we create those as we need them for things like layout and people and the sessions and the services. And eventually we end up with that ravioli shape again with all of our modules in Angular, which are very composable. It allows us to work in sprints with teams, where different teams work on different modules, all with their own dependencies, so they can be plugged into the big machine. So I could work on maybe layout, and someone else could work on dashboard, and a third person on admin. And then we can have a core service module that they all depend upon, maybe for data access or some reusable widgets. And then we can tie them into some lower level things, like UI Bootstrap or NG Hammer. And then maybe next sprint, Somebody adds in a new module called Avengers, so they can tie into those. And the Avengers can take advantage of all the other modules we had. And you can see how this tree, these sets of raviolis, can expand out and make it easier to code. The whole point of this is quickly identifying your code is huge and crucial for productivity. Because if you don't and you can't find your code, it's like the never-ending swirl. How do they do this stuff anyway? So I want to... Uh, really call out to the community who's just been amazing at supporting the style guide. The Angular team's helped out a little bit. Quite frankly, most of the style guide came from you and from people on the internet and everybody who's contributed. So I want to show a picture of uh, one of you from the audience who's really been a special contributor to this, showing their love for Angular. Thank you very much, Ward. But the conversation still happens on GitHub. GitHub's where it's always been located. It's been great. It's been really useful because we get the PRs. And there's been a lot of traffic up there, which is great. And it's not just people visiting. People are contributing back. We've had 700 people fork the repo and make their own version of the style guide, which is awesome. It's not meant to be an end-all, be-all. It's meant to be a conversation starter. Create one for your company. 60 different contributors. And most impressively to me is nine different languages. I can't speak eight of them. I'm barely the ninth. So we get all these people contributing, and I really want to thank you all. And it's not stopping here because, as Brad mentioned yesterday, uh, I've taken on a, uh, my own burden to start getting going with the migration guy, but I want everybody's help. I want everybody's help to contribute back to figure out how do we get that bridge from 1.x to 2.0? What is important? What are your apps doing that you need from the style guide? And recently, just this week, Emmanuel Demi from France has created an ESLint style checker, which you can use to actually run against your code and check for these styles. And he's looking for other contributors to help him out to beef up all the rules that are in there, which is pretty awesome. So kudos to him. And if you're looking for a place to start for, a guide, for that, what follows the guide, you can check out this hot towel generator, which Ward and I have named, because you can't go to a spot without a towel, right? So at least you wouldn't want to. So you can use that to kind of get going with the, uh, with the generators. But really, I want you to leave with one thought, and that's whatever you do, you want to adopt a style guide. It's all about communication. It's all about being able to communicate your code and making it self-readable and evident to everybody else. Because you want to be that person, if you do this and adopt a guide, you want to be that person who everybody else wants to code with, who they want to pair with, who they want to learn from. So if you do that, I think we're all in a good place. And thank you so much for the contributions.